السلام عليكم ورحمة الله طلاب الفرقة الثانية شعبة اللغة الإنجليزية كلية التجارة جامعة المنوفية uh, We finalized our lectures about the numerical descriptive measures and now I need to remind you before introducing a new topic the probability distributions I need to remind you with uh, three or four points The first point we introduced before the frequency tables and we said and we can find in the frequency table the relative frequency and the relative frequency in somehow quantifying the likelihood for a specific value for the uh, variable that you are introducing the, the frequency table for. So the relative frequency in somehow can be introduced as the probability. The second point we had before that the probability values has to be between zero and one, that the main characteristics of the probability has to be between zero and one and the sum of the probability values for all the values of x equal one. So now a discrete variable, that's the second point. What is the meaning of the discrete variable? We had before the difference between discrete and continuous variable. A variable in general can be qualitative or quantitative. A qualitative non-numeric values, a quantitative a numeric values. For the quantitative data can be countable integer values then we said it's discrete variable. If it's uncountable, can be in decimals, then we said it's continuous variable. So the discrete probability distribution means for the variable that discrete, you have integer value, you have integer values for that variable, and for each value, you need to find the probability for that uh, value. Then for all the values of X, you have the probability values, and then, that constructing the probability distribution for that discrete variable. So, just remind you a very simple example uh, in somehow uh, assuming we have a, a sample of 2000 so families, they have uh, some cars, and then we put that in one frequency table. Assuming the first two columns, that the frequency table that we have, the number of cars for each family, the number of cars can be zero, then we have 30 families, and then one, then we have 470, and so on, and the sum of these uh, frequency equal 2,000. Okay, so that's the frequency table. Now I can introduce, now the number of cars, it's integer values, then we can say the number of cars, it's variable. It's discrete variable. So that discrete variable has values from zero to four. For each value, you have frequency. So. How many they have the number of cars equal zero? We have 30. How many they have the number of cars equal one? We have 470 and so on. So that's the frequency table we had before in our lectures and we covered uh, that. Today, the probability distribution for the discrete variable is somehow just the relative frequency. So if we, how we can calculate the relative frequency? Before we had, now question one, assuming now we need to write the probability distribution for that random variable, which is the number of cars, then a probability distribution just in somehow in our case now based on the definition or the approach of the relative frequency just calculating a relative frequency for that frequency values giving you a probability distribution so now in value 30 divided by 2000 that equal 0 0.015 so now 0 0.015 and somehow quantifying the likelihood of the value zero for that variable number of cars so in that case we can say the probability of x equals zero equal 0.015. So the relative frequency can be used to quantify the likelihood of the value or the values of the uh, variable that you are studying. So I need to say discrete probability distribution just in somehow the relative frequency for the variable which you are studying. So if you have a frequency table, then very simply you can construct a probability distribution just using a relative frequency. So now the probability distribution, the values of x and the relative frequency, we name it as a probability of x for that data. So now if I need to change the color, so just we can say, and somehow that actually, so now we can, we can say first and the third column. So now in first, okay. And the third column, constructing a probability distribution for that variable, which is the number of cars. If I'm ignoring the frequency values, using the first and third column, now it will be a probability distribution. So if I ask you, what is the probability that the number of cars equal one? Directly, it's actually a probability equal 0.235. How I can calculate that? If you have a frequency, just the frequency value divided by total. 
what is the probability that the number of cars equal three from that probability distribution that equal 0.245. So somehow we can consider relative frequency as a probability distribution and that is the meaning of the discrete probability distribution. If you have discrete variable and you have a relative frequency for that variable, then we are constructing a probability distribution for that variable. Once you have the probability distribution, we can answer many questions about the possible values of that variable. So now if I can ask you very simply, if we ask you very simply, what is the probability that the number of cars greater than or equal to? What is the probability that the number of cars, we name the number of cars as X, okay? Assuming the number of cars now is X. What is the probability that the number of cars, which is X greater than or equal to? Now we have different values for X. We don't have certain value for X. So now X, it's random variable, has values from zero to four. So what is the probability that X is greater than or equal to? Just from that table, we can say greater than or equal to, including two, three, and four. And then adding the probability for these values, giving you the probability of X greater than or equal to. In the same way, if I ask you, what is the probability of X less than two? Then we have only two values. We have only two values less than two, okay? So less than two, then we have only two values less than two, zero and one, then adding in probability values for these two values, then giving you the probability of x less than two. And the third question, what is the probability that x between two and four, x greater than two, less than four, and actually between two and four only we have one value, which is the three, and then the probability for that equal point Two, four, five. So once you have a probability distribution is constructed for the discrete probability distribution, we can get more information about the possible values for that variable X. We can quantify the likelihood for that, for that values. So in somehow, you can find out from the table different information. In first information, we can find the probability for specific values of X. Second information can be X is now is random variable, has different values. I need to find the average or the standard deviation for that variable, how I can find them out. I need to remind you now how we calculate the mean and standard deviation from sample data, from the raw data. So in general, if we can clean all that. So in general, how we calculate, so that the answer just before, actually it contain the, the, the meaning of mean standard deviation. So the answer for probability of X greater than or equal to, we said adding for two, three, four, giving you a probability 0.75, and probability of X between, a probability of X between two and four, that equal probability of X equal three, equal uh, 0.245, and so on. So it's very simple way to find them out from the, uh, from the uh, table. So now I need to discuss one point. Uh, the point that I need to discuss, if you have a probability distribution table, you have a values of X and you have a probability of X, and now X is random variable, can be the question, what is the value of the mean? How to calculate mu from that, day, from that probability distribution? How to calculate the variance sigma squared from that probability distribution? So now in that probability distribution, we have a values of X and we have a probability for each value of X. We cannot ignore the probability. We cannot ignore the probability. So we cannot now use the formula that mu equal sigma X over N. So if you have a probability distribution, we cannot use this formula. You have to modify this formula. And the same, we cannot use the sigma squared formula that X sigma X minus mu all squared, uh, all squared, divided by n, we cannot use this formula. Why? Because actually this two formula not including the probability of x. But we have to modify this formula to consider the probability of x in, in the case that you are calculating the average or you are calculating the standard deviation for the variable x. So that's the next point now I need to explain. So just to simplify the idea, we can write the formula for we can write the formula for mu from, from scratch. Mu, which is the average, equal sigma x 
over n or divided by n, okay? So write that in the different way. That equal sigma x times one over n. No change till now, the same. Everything the same, okay? So sigma x over n, that equal sigma x times one over n. Now the point, if you have data, raw data, like only uh, three values, if you have a three, uh, two, and five. And if you are calculating the average, we are saying that in mu equal the, uh, the three values, the sum of the three values, the three plus two plus five, all divided by three. So in somehow, now we are assuming that each value has the probability one over three. So writing that formula in this way, we are assuming each value in this data has the probability equal one over n. If it's random sample, that is a random sample, and each value had the same probability. So now we are assuming that in value three has a probability one over three, the value two has a probability one over three, the value five has a probability one over three. If you have random sample, you are assuming each value had the same probability and that we are saying in one over n in somehow that the probability of x. But for each value that you have in the random sample had the same probability equal one over x, now one over x, that one uh, actually probability of x equal one over n. So now if I need to generalize this formula, the same formula, if I need to generalize that, we can replace one over n by probability of x. If instead of saying sigma x times one over n, no, it will be general, just sigma x times the probability of x, and that can be applied or can be used for the case of the uh, probability distribution. So that equal sigma x, times a probability of x to be generalized. So I need to say, what I need to say from this, uh, from this actually, I need to say that in no sigma x over n, it's a special case from the formula sigma x times the probability of x. So if you have random sample data, then just you can use the formula sigma x over n. If you have a probability distribution, then you can use sigma x times the probability of x to calculate mu. Even now, if I need to calculate the average from that table, I have to say in the mu equal sigma x times the probability of x, which means I have to add a new column and multiplying each value of x times its probability. We can add a new column now and then finding x times the probability of x to find the value of the mu. That I need just to explain how we can find the average or mean from a probability distribution data. In the same way, in the same way, how we calculate a variance? I need to explain the same idea. How we calculate a variance? So we can clean that. Again, a variance, uh, sigma squared from a sample data, we said again in the same way. Uh, sigma squared equal numerator sigma x minus mu all squared divided by n. Okay. If a sigma squared the variance from the population data, sigma x minus mu all squared divided by n, in the same modification, we can write that as sigma x minus mu all squared times one over n. Okay. So in that case, for the, random, for the random sample, you are assuming that each value had the same probability one over n. But we can generalize that, and then we can actually replace one over n by the probability of x. Okay, then can be generalized in the same way, and then the formula will be changed, it's not one over n, it's actually probability of x, and for each value of x, you have different probability, then you can change the value for each time. So that equal to be, to be generalized. Now, variance equals sigma, 
x minus mu all squared times probability of x. And each value of x, you have different probability, then you are changing this value. Okay, so how to calculate the mu from probability distribution? Sigma x times the probability of x. How to calculate the variance? Sigma x minus mu all squared times the probability of x. And one of the main characteristics, we said x minus mu squared, that quadratic form, you can expand that and then can be simplified. And that form is correct. Yes, we can use it for the variance. Another form, very simplified, you can write that down as sigma squared equal sigma x squared times the probability of x. Okay, that's one component. All that minus mu squared. Then that's the main formula for the variance. Okay, so that's sigma squared. That's the main formula for the variance, but can be simplified to be sigma x squared times the probability of x minus mu squared. So if you have probability distribution, you need first to find sigma x times p of x to find the mu, and you need to find sigma x squared times the probability of x to find the variance, because actually that's the first component, and then subtract the value of the mean squared. So now I explained what is the meaning of the probability distribution, how to construct the probability distribution from frequency data, how to find or answer the questions for specific probability of values of x, and how to calculate the mean and the variance. And by the way, if you have a variance, you can calculate the standard deviation, you can calculate the coefficient of variation. So how to calculate mean, variance, and standard deviation, now it's clear. Now we need to apply that in one application. So the next uh, application now, I need to calculate the mean and the variance and the standard deviation from the probability distribution. Just we need to add two columns. You know, whatever the data that you have, if you have x and the probability of x, you can, add in, uh, you can add two new columns. The first column, x times the probability of x, and the second column, x squared times the probability of x. Adding them up, you'll find the variance. Now we can apply that to simplify the idea. So that's the formula, mu equals sigma x, as we know that. So now we know how we can find that out. We know that in, from the, the same formula for mu sigma x over n, we can find sigma x times the probability of x, and the variance, sigma x minus mu all squared times the probability of x, can be simplified to be sigma x squared times the p of x, all that minus the second component in mu squared. If I first find sigma x squared times the probability of x, and then subtract the value of mu squared, and the standard deviation equal the square root for the variance. So now it's straightforward and very simplified to calculate. Uh, assuming we have this table, that actually in somehow we have a number of heads as x, and we have a probability of x. x now uh, actually has uh, five values from zero to four, and for each value you have a probability, and now the question calculate the mean and the standard deviation for the number of heads. The number of heads, probability, discrete variable, the number of heads now, discrete variable, has a value from zero to four, and for each value have, for each value have a probability, and be careful that, to say that is a probability distribution. Now assuming I have one equation. What you have now is a probability distribution. We have two characteristics to say we have a probability distribution uh, indeed. The first, first, you may have two characteristics to decide that what we have is discrete probability distribution. The first characteristic that each value of the probability between zero and one. I can write that down. So now to decide that what you have is a probability distribution, you have to check two conditions. To decide it's discrete probability distribution, first the probability of x for each value of x, the probability of x has to be uh, between zero and one. You have to check that each value for the probability between zero and one. So now yes, each value between zero and one. The second condition, the sum of the values of the probability for all the values of x has to be equal to one. But for all the values of x, adding up the values of the probability, that has to be one. Now, if you are adding, if you add them up, you'll find exactly that 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and you have 0.4, then you have one. So if you have these two conditions satisfied, then what you have is a probability distribution. And that can be one equation. That can be one equation that I'm giving you table, you have x and probability of x, and can be the question that, do you have a probability distribution or not? 
then the answer can be yes or no according to uh, satisfying these two conditions. You are saying yes, if you have a probability of x for each value between zero and one, and the sum of all the probability values equal, equal one. Okay, so now in that equation, I need to calculate the mean and standard deviation. So now I have x and I have the probability of x. I have to add a new columns. So we can put that as columns, and then I need to add one column to calculate the mean, and then adding another column to calculate the standard deviation. So we can put that, okay. So now we have the values of x and the probability of x. We can put that. So that's the question. You have the x and the probability of x. And the sum of the values, yes, equal one, then it's a probability distribution. Now calculate the mean, mu equals sigma x times the probability of x. You have to add another column. You can name it as x times the probability of x. Each value of x times the probability of x. 0 times 0.1 equals 0, 1 times 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 2 times 0 0.3, 0 0.6, and so on, and then adding them up, that the sum of x times the probability of x, that equal mu. If I now will value mu equal 2.15. The second, to calculate the standard deviation, you have first to calculate the variance. And we said the variance is simplified formula, a simplified formula, sigma x squared times the probability of x minus mu squared, then you have to add one column, we name it as x squared times the p of x. Each value of x squared times the probability of x. If each value of x squared times the probability of x. First value of x zero, zero squared zero times the probability of x being point one equal point uh, equal zero. One squared one times point two, it's point two. Uh, two squared four, four times point three, one point two, and so on. And doing that for all the values of x, and then adding them up will give you sigma x squared times the probability of x. Sigma x squared times the probability of x, that's the first component of the uh, variance, minus mu squared, you have a value of mu equal 2.15, then 2.15 squared, using calculator simplified, we'll find that equal 1.4 approximated, okay? And 1.4 approximated. The standard deviation for the variance will give you almost 1.2, so that approximated actually 1.2 uh, for the standard deviation. So now the average of the number of heads equal 2.15 and the standard deviation equal 1.2 and then we are describing the center and the variation for that variable. That means, as we had before in the numerical measures, we are using a mean to describe the center of the values of the variable and we need a variation or the standard deviation to describe a variation around the center. So now, the center value or the typical value for that variable mostly around two. Yes, and we find the values actually from zero to four. So it's around the middle value, it's two. According to the probability values, be careful about that. Not explaining the values without considering the probability. Okay, so for the, in the random sample or the raw data, you can sort with regardless, you can sort the data and then we can say the value in the middle mostly giving you the typical value. But for the probability distribution, be careful. We are not looking only at the values of x, still considering the probability of x to give you actually the center value, and the same for the standard deviation. So mostly for that variable, we have a value to uh, around the two that the center of the uh, variable of the variable for that uh, the center of that variable, and the standard deviation around one. So we have mostly center two and we have uh, more or less 1.2 around that value uh, two, giving you uh, the variation around center. So that's in summary what I mean by the, uh, the discrete probability distribution. Now I covered what is the meaning of the probability distribution for the discrete variable, how to find the probability distribution from relative frequency data or from frequency table calculate relative frequency uh, values. We can find or we can answer the many questions from probability distribution. We can find the probability for some values of x, we can find the mean, we can find the variance, we can find the standard deviation. So that's the main uh, point. The last point that I need to confirm again, just to, I yeah, need to emphasize and to confirm the point. You have to be careful that not any frequency table can be a probability distribution. In some cases, if you don't have all the values of x, you have to have all the values of x, and then you calculate the probability for each value of x, and you have to check to be probability distribution, to be probability distribution, you have to check two conditions, two conditions. And again, I need to confirm that point. 
in each value of the probability between 0 and 1 and the sum of the values equal 1. About each value between 0 and 1, it's not negative, it's not greater than 1, and then sum of the values equal 1, in that case, it will be a probability distribution. Okay, so now a very simple application for that point, return back for that question. If you have a number of adults, you have a number of adults from one, two, three, and the last point is given as four or more, and you have a probability for each value, and you know that it's a probability distribution. It's given for you that it's a probability distribution, so you have one value missing. Now, because each value is a probability, and then the sum of these values has to be equal one, sum of all the values equal one, then one minus what you have will give you the missing value. That's one of the tricks. I can give you one table showing it's a probability distribution, and you have one value missing, because the sum of the values equal one, then one minus what you have giving you the missing value. So one, uh, one minus that sum, sum of the values now equal point, uh, point 0.9, one minus point 0.9 equal uh, point 0.10. So in that question and answer saying that, what is the value of the number of adults four or more in that uh, table? The answer for that equal point 0.10. Why? One minus what you have, one minus point 0.9 equal indeed point 0.10. So the answer now is point 0.10. That based on the idea that, in probability distribution, the sum of the values equal equal one. Okay, so we have a, a, that I need to cover for actually for the meaning of the discrete probability uh, distribution. We have other questions as applications, but we can say there's some problems now. In problem one, just, just that will be given for you. Please, you have to solve it by yourself to check the answer. Now you have a number of adults uh, from one to four, and you have a probability distribution for that. And now the question calculate the mean and standard deviation and the answer, the final answer it's given for you. Please, you have to calculate by yourself and check that you have the correct answer. Okay, so that's one of the problems that's given for you. You have to solve it by yourself and check that you have the correct answer. Indeed, that it's very simplified. We can say discrete probability distribution, just normal extension for the frequency tables. To be simplified, in probability, discrete probability distribution, it's normal extension for the relative frequency tables that we had before. We covered before what is the meaning of the frequency table, how to calculate the relative frequency, and we covered how to calculate the mean and the standard deviation from the frequency table. And now if I need to discuss with you, I can say that what we had before, how to calculate the mean and standard deviation from the frequency table, the same as we had now, the same formula. So now I can return back for this point and we can explain the idea. So now if I, if I need to simplify the point, the last point we covered, that the last point I need to say, the last point we covered, we said uh, how to calculate in you in general. I need to confirm that there is nothing in you in our today. Just we are formalizing a point for the discrete probability distribution based on what we have, based on the frequency tables, based on the calculation of the mean and the standard deviation from the frequency table, just with transforming from frequency to be relative frequency. So, in general, the formula for mu, we said that equal, and somehow, a sigma x over n. Not just I need to discuss the formula to say that there is nothing in u. So we said that equal sigma x times one over n, and very simply, we name it as a probability of x. If you have a probability of x given, you can use it. Otherwise, you are using 1 over n. So that equal sigma x times the probability of x. And the same, and the same for the frequency tables. If you have a classes, then we said in u equal and somehow sigma f times the midpoint divided by sigma f that can be written as can be written that equal n okay that equal n sigma f times m divided by n and somehow that in value uh, in midpoint we can name it as x so that equal sigma x times f over n and indeed that the same as the probability of x because the frequency for the values divided by n, that's the way we are calculating actual probability of x, that's the relative frequency. That's the relative frequency. And we name it as the probability of x. 
So still we are actually the same idea, just introduced in different way. So calculating the mean from the raw data or from a random sample, sigma x over n, calculating the mean from the frequency table using the frequency value sigma f times m divided by n, the same as calculating the mean from the frequency table as relative frequency as a probability a distribution, the same, the same way. So I need to say that what we had, the, relative, the uh, frequency tables, the plus calculating the mean and standard deviation from the frequency tables, and the discrete probability distribution, mostly the same idea. When you are studying that, you have to put them all together to have the full uh, picture about what you are studying. So um, we finalize the point. You have to, in first point, what is the meaning of the probability distribution for discrete variable, how to calculate the probability for specific values, how to calculate the mean, how to calculate the variance and standard deviation, and the last point, how to check that what you have is a probability distribution by satisfying the two conditions for the variable that you have, the two conditions for the uh, probability, each value between 0 and 1, and the sum of the probability values for all the values of x equal uh, 1. I hope that it's clear for you. Thank you very much. And actually, the next point, it will be discrete probability distributions uh, for some distributions like the binomial and Poisson will continue, inshallah, next time. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.